In this tutorial, we're going to look at user types. A user type is a combination of a test script and the user settings profile. The script contains your recorded interactions with the application under test, in addition to any script customizations you made. We call these interactions a transaction. A user settings profile is a set of settings applied to your virtual users to define their traits, which web browser they use, if the user is a first-time or returning user, and if the user has bandwidth limitations. To demonstrate how this all fits together, we will create a few user settings profiles with varying characteristics. The default profile is called Profile 1. Let's take a look at it. It uses Internet Explorer 10 as its browser. For bandwidth, it has an unlimited high-speed connection. Let's tweak the settings for this profile a bit. We will adjust the think time options. These affect how long the virtual user waits between single actions within a transaction. We can tweak the user tolerance settings to better simulate real-world user activity. We will make this an average user who reloads pages when server response is slow or page content is missing. Now let's create a second user profile to simulate users connecting with Firefox web browser. We'll select Mozilla Firefox as the browser. Other than that, we will accept the default settings for this profile. Now let's create a profile for users accessing this application with an iPhone. We'll select iPhone as the browser type. Under Internet settings, we will select the bandwidth type HSDPA. We will take the downstream bandwidth setting up to the max. Now we have three user settings profiles to apply to the workload in our tests. Rename the default profile Internet Explorer to differentiate it from the other profiles created. A quick way to create a variation of an existing profile is to use the copy profile command. We will create a profile for Chrome with an LTE bandwidth setting. We now have four user types defined. User types are a combination of a test script, a user group, and one of the profiles we created. The default user type for Internet Explorer is already included. We need to assign the other three user types to the workload. Now that our user types are set up, we should run a baseline test. Switch to the full workflow mode to display the Find Baseline button. We will start our baseline test, making use of the user types we've just created. Here you can check the status of the user types. Baseline tests are helpful, because they determine an application's ideal performance baseline. All future performance measurements will be compared against the results of this test. When the test is finished, we can view the baseline report. Here are the user types we created. Scrolling through the report, we see all the results from the Chrome user type, in addition to the other user types. I'm happy with these baseline results, so I will accept them. Now we have our accepted baseline report. Let's adjust the response time thresholds. Here are the timers we used for the test. Thresholds are used to define good, acceptable and unacceptable web response times in an overview report. We can specify what sort of messages we want to receive when the boundaries are exceeded. We will go with a warning when the lower bound is exceeded and an error when the upper bound is exceeded. You can also adjust the multipliers that are used to calculate the boundaries in baseline results. The average response times are the timers recorded in the baseline run and are multiplied by these numbers to determine the boundaries. We will accept the threshold settings. Thanks for watching.